I created Rainforest Cafe, and I went out and told everybody about my idea to try to get some feedback. <clears throat> For the most part, that was a huge mistake. <laughs> what people said to me when I told them that I wanted to have live tropical birds adjacent to food, and I wanted to have cascading waterfalls and soothing mists, and I wanted to have animated animals, and I wanted to have uh, uh, all of these weird things that no one's ever thought of before, they said that it was absolutely impossible, that, that it, it couldn't be done. And they asked me to show them architectural diagrams. Steve, get, can you define further what you'd really like to do? Uh, so I decided to take it a little bit further. I transformed my St. Louis Park, Minnesota home into the Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> now, this was a suburban neighborhood. You have to imagine this in Minneapolis. I, I think I'm the only one on earth that used to shovel the snow off the grass so I'd have the green come through. I had a neon paradise sign. I had pink antifreeze in my waterfalls so they wouldn't freeze. You can't imagine what that looked like at night. The neighbors thought that I had lost my mind, literally. Um, uh, they hired a psychiatrist. <laughs> And he would call me once a week, and he would say, Steve, the neighbors already chipped in. They already paid for it. They really think that you, uh, you need psychiatric help. Would you come and just talk to me, please? Uh, let, let me be worthy of the money that the neighbors chipped in. I even had a, an elephant uh, that you can see in the picture there uh, in my driveway. This was the driveway to my suburban home. One of the nice things, though, is that elephant was the inspiration for the elephants that are outside the Rainforest Cafe now. Uh, every Rainforest Cafe in the country has an elephant that, is, uh, that greets our guests. And uh, that idea came from my driveway, as well as many others. I even built a tropical bed in my home that looked like a, a came out of a, a rainforest. It looked like it was built out of a treehouse. And I had waterfalls and rock formations. And uh, if you've ever been to a rainforest cafe, uh, I embrace them here at, uh, at Disney World, I could tell you that we have lightning and thunderstorms every 22 minutes. And I had lightning and thunderstorms in my bedroom. Not many dates. Nobody wanted to be among lightning and thunderstorms and a nut that a psychiatrist would call every single week. I had 40 live tropical birds in my house, two tortoises, a baby baboon. By the way, nobody should, uh, should have baboons. <laughs> they, they belong in a zoo. My electric phone and gas were turned off every single month for three years. I'm not proud of that. It was a very, very hard time. Uh, I used to look in the mirror at night. Sometimes I'd cry pretty hard. And then I'd laugh at myself and realize I was probably psychotic. <laughs> but I'd wake up the next day and I'd laugh and I'd be encouraged, and I'd get back on my bicycle, and I'd ride it again. I'd get back up, and I'd keep fighting over and over and over again, because I knew what I had. I knew that it would be embraced by families around the world. I knew that it was a phenomenal concept, and it was worthy of what I was going through. That's the inside of a rainforest cafe. I can't tell you how proud we are. 17 years later, to still have the Rainforest Cafe entertaining hundreds of thousands of families. My father was watching the World Championship of Poker in Las Vegas, where he lived. This gentleman named Lyle Berman was playing for the World Championship of Poker. He had won seven times. He had won seven gold bracelets for playing in the World Championship of Poker. And, uh, he was sitting at the table playing, and all of a sudden, the announcer said, Ladies and gentlemen, from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Mr. Lyle Berman. Lyle got out of his seat because he had to use the restroom. So he went to the restroom, 
And my father seized the opportunity and crawled under these red velvet security ropes that were surrounding the world championship of poker. You have to imagine this. In the middle of Las Vegas, there's tens of thousands of people standing watching the world championship of poker. And my dad snuck under the security ropes and sat in Lyle Berman's chair. Lyle comes back from the bathroom and he says, Sir, are you out of your mind? I've got $330,000 in chips sitting in front of you. You're sitting in my chair. I'm playing for the World Championship of Poker. There's security guards all over the place. Please get out, otherwise I'm going to have to call security. And my father said, I'm not leaving. Lyle said, sir, you're crazy. You're going to be arrested. My father took out a $50 bill out of his pocket, and he handed it to Lyle, and he said, please, I'm begging you. My son created this rainforest cafe, and it's the most incredible thing you'll ever see. And you're from Minneapolis. You really need to see it. Lyle said, you're out of your mind. I just told you I'm playing for the world championship of poker. Well, what is this about a rainforest cafe? And uh, with that, Lyle gave him back the $50. He gave him his business card. He said, call my secretary, Joan, and set up an appointment. And my father left. He picked up the phone. It's now 3 o'clock in the morning. The phone rings in my home. I answered, in, of course, in my underwear. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. And I said, hello. I was a little bit angry. I thought someone had the wrong number. My father said, son, grab a pen. I said, dad, are you in trouble? Are you in jail? Did you get hit by a car? Are you in a car accident? What's wrong? He said, just grab a pen and write this name down, Lyle Berman. I wrote it down, and he said, do you have it? Do you know how to spell it? I said, Dad, I got it, Lyle Berman. He said, have you ever heard of him? I said, no, Dad, I've never heard of Lyle Berman. He said, well, you better get to know him, because he really wants your Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> Lyle was my angel investor, my mentor, the founder of Grand Casinos and the World Poker Tour, pretty famous guy. And uh, he went to my home 27 times, 27 times over three and a half years. The first time he went to my home, he came in with a Grand Casino's coffee cup at 9 o'clock in the morning. I told his secretary that he had to come after 6 o'clock at night when it got dark because I wanted to take advantage of the two gasoline generators that I had in my backyard, the 3,700 bright orange extension cords running through my home, so he could see all the specific things that I had that needed nighttime to see them. He didn't listen. He didn't care. He thought I was just a nut. <laughs> and he came into my, my home at 9 o'clock in the morning with this coffee cup in his hand, and as he walked in the front door, I think he was greeted by the baboon, <laughs> And, uh, and he, he looked at me and he said, just so you know, uh, there's not a chance that I will ever invest in this idea. He said, so I don't want to give you any false hopes. Uh, and he went through the entire place and he just kept shaking his head. I think he spilled his coffee four times. He laughed an awful lot. And he said, uh, boy, are you committed? And I said, I sure am. He said, you should be committed. <laughs> And as he was leaving, he said to me, Steve, would you mind if I brought my kids back next week to take a look at this? I call that the conditional no. And I said, absolutely. And every day I would spend more money getting it ready. I'd put more greenery in the ceiling. I'd find a hole here or find a hole there. My attention to detail was the most important thing for me. It took three and a half years Week after week, he'd bring other visitors back. He'd bring, one day, he, he uh, rented a bus, and he brought his entire office uh, to my home. You can imagine, I lived in a suburban neighborhood. Imagine seeing all these cars, week after week after week, and then the bus. 27 times over three and a half years until Lyle Berman. Finally, I walked into his office one day, and I said to Lyle, I said, I've had it. I've done all kinds of things for you. I've gotten to know your family. I've gotten to know your friends. Uh, I've done everything that I possibly could. This is it. Uh, you know, I'm done. 
I walked into his office wearing a sign around my neck. And the sign said, Lyle made me do it. And I told him that if he didn't invest that day, that I was going to the Hennepin Avenue Bridge, and I was going to jump. He said, that's it, I'm in. <laughs> and I found my angel investor. But it took courage, it took change, and three and a half years. Persistence, lots of persistence, and learning how to take no and change it into yes.